Good morning, seventh graders. Respect Academy. How are we doing this morning? All right, all right, all right. Settle down. Gregory, let's get our books. Let's get ready. Jude, get that book out. Today, we are going to begin on 15. We only just started this book last week. To refresh, we were introduced to Wesley, then Tyrone. Those two characters told us that they, uh, in their English class, they were introduced to the Harlem Renaissance, like you guys were, and they started writing their own poetry, and Open Mic Fridays became a thing, where students read their own work on Fridays. And just sneak peek, whenever we want to start this, maybe this Friday, I've seen some good poems already, all regular class work will be put on hold, and students... uh, We'll share their own work. Maybe we'll find a way to give them some feedback. But that's where we would like Fridays to be moving towards. Open mic Fridays. So start thinking about it. Write, write, write every day. All right. So then we met Shankara. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. I think so. Shankara Troop. And she told us of um, an incident where her boyfriend or a date gave her a black eye. Um, And she's really upset about it, disappointed in herself, because she's watched her sister go through these same troubles. And we ended right before she shared her poem. So let's hear her poem. It's on page 15. It's entitled Bruised Love by Shankara Troop. A midnight thirst sent me, padding to the kitchen for a jelly jar of water and an accidental run-in with my sister. She tiptoed in late and limping, her cheek raw as red-brown meat, I caught a quick glance in the chilly glow of the refrigerator before she had a chance to hide the latest souvenir her boyfriend gave her. I bruise easily, is one of the lies she sprinkles like sugar, but I'm fifteen, not brainless. Besides, I knew the truth at ten. He'll never do it again, she swears, but he will, because she'll let him. Now me? I've got no use for lame excuses or imitation love that packs a punch. Page 17. We're going back to Tyrone. He was the second voice we heard from. He was a little angrier. He was a little more defiant. School ain't for me. What are these, what are these teachers telling us lies for? That, that was him. But he's getting... He wants to be a rapper, so... He's still got this dream, and the class is engaging him. So, page 17. My pops used to hit my moms like that. When I was little, I used to hide under my bed. And I'd cry, scared he was coming for me next. Damn, I ain't thought about that in years. How could you do that, pops? I don't get it. Is that why he hung around? So he'd have somebody smaller than him to beat up on? I don't even want to go there. I'm just glad he finally stopped drinking and cleaned up his act before he checked out. It gave us a chance to have some good times together. Shankara was the third one up today. Her stuff was so deep, nobody wanted to follow her. There weren't but two more people planning to read anyway, including me. We both decided to bag it till she till the next open mic. Meanwhile, I'm going to be busy writing me a rap about dudes beating on women. I'll call it Little Men, because that's what they are. Page 18, we're about to meet a new character, Raul Ramirez. Lunch is a memory of indigestion. Shankara sat across from me in the cafeteria, and I couldn't help staring at her. Her bruises are almost gone, but I can still see the shadows they left behind. If she was my hermanita, I'd squash the cockroach who messed her up like that. That's why I was thinking when I remembered it, it ain't so nice to say. So I ate too fast and got her there before she could catch me. Only 20 minutes till class starts, and Mr. Ward don't like it if I leave a mess on his desk. So that's 18 minutes to paint, plus two more for cleaning up and washing the paintbrushes. If Reynard gets here early, he'll help. 
He always does. I don't know why. Tyrone, he's another story. He checks in early, lots of times when I'm here, but he keeps his distance usually. Once, he came up behind me and watched over my shoulder while I worked. Made me kind of nervous, if you must know. The Reekins and the brothers, they don't always hit it off. Anyway, he stood there for the longest. Then he grunted and said, You good, man. I'll give you that. Thanks, I said. You wasting your time, though. You know you ain't gonna make no money doing this. Maybe, maybe not, I said. But some things ain't about money. You tripping, man, said Tyrone. Money, money is the alpha and omega. Ask anybody. I just shrugged and gave him my no hablo inglés look like I didn't get what he was talking about. It was the quickest way to end the conversation. People just don't get it. Even if I never make a dime, which, by the way, ain't gonna happen, I'd still have to paint. Don't get me wrong. Money is useful. I'm lucky Mr. Ward leaves brushes and watercolor paper for me to use, though I ain't gonna tell him that. It's none of his business I can't afford fancy brushes and watercolor paper at home. Anyway, it's good for him to help out the future Diego Rivera. He knows I'm the real deal. Didn't he come to me for advice on how to decorate the classroom? The paper frames were my idea. Good work belongs in a gallery, I told him, especially if it's mine. I never thought about writing poetry before, but Mr. Ward said he, he's going to start videotaping our Friday sessions. Guess who's going to be the first one? New book. Turn the page up. Guess who's going to be the first one in front of the camera? Of course, that means I have to write a poem, so I better get busy. Even if it's hard, I'll do it. I don't mind working hard. Whatever it takes. Entiendes? Raul Ramirez, painter poet. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Someday, I'll have a poetry reading and a one-man show at the Nueva Rican Poets Cafe on the Lower East Side. I'll hand out tokens to all my friends, so they got no excuse not to take the ride downtown, okay? My brothers laugh at me, just because they've been in the world a little bit longer. They say I'm loco en la cabeza. That ain't no spit gonna be no big-time artist in America. First off, I tell them, I ain't no spick. And second, watch me. Abuelita says my talent is as old as her bones. She says I got it. And my stubbornness from her father. He never did nothing with his, with his talent, though. I asked her why not. Por que la familia could not eat paint, she said. So I'll be the first painter in the family. That's fine with me. I've been drawing pictures all my life. I used to make my sister model for me. I'd bribe her with whatever I could scrounge up from returning soda bottles to the grocery. Eventually, I got tired of digging through trash for bottles, and she got bored modeling. Now it's easier. My girlfriend sits for me. Every painter needs a model, right? Anyway, she knows if she's nice to me. One day I'll make her famous. Even if she's not nice, I'll probably paint her because she's beautiful. I want to show the beauty of, all of our people, that we are not all banditos like they show on TV, munching cook fritos and sipping beer through chipped teeth. I will paint Los Niños scooping up laughter in the sunshine and splashing in the temporary pool of a fire hydrant. I will paint my cousins turning the sidewalk into a dance floor when salsa or la bamba spills from the third floor window. I will paint Mommy standing at the ironing board late in the evening after a day of piecework in the factory, sweat pouring off her, steam rising from a pot in the background. Me tugging at her skirt while she irons. I will paint the way she used to smile down at me. The love in her eyes saying, I only do this for you. Mommy's beauty is better than a movie star's. It survives a kind of life where pamper is a noun, not a verb. I will capture that beauty on canvas someday, when I'm good enough. For now, I draw my sketchbook, and I paint portraits of myself for practice. But it's not so bad. I am handsome after all.
All right, lastly, let's read his poem. It's on page 22. Just the, the way it looks is really unique, that big Z. <clears throat> it's called Zorro by Raul Ramirez. Call me Zorro, all swash and buckle while the cameras roll, cape swinging in the breeze, teeth showing as expected. I lunge on cue. Save the damsel in distress. I understand my role. I've studied all those scripts and comic books. I used to pose for close-ups. Knew how to dutifully disappear when the script said fade to black. Then I'd wait uncomfortably between the lines of my own story till someone with skin like milk yelled, Action! But I'm done. I'm too old for comic books. It's time to lose the cape. Step off the page. Except I think I'll keep the mask. Why well, make it easy for you to choose whether I am Zorro or El Bandito when I am neither? Your categories are too confining. The fact is, you're more comfortable with myth than man. But I am here to help. First off, put down your camera. Second, give me your hand. Let's listen to Tyrone's review real quick. Page 20 through 3. Raul was on the money. You gotta make your own rules, Jack. That's the real 411. Forget who white folks think you are, cause they ain't got a clue. That's some strong stuff Raul be writing. That Z thing was cool too. He was working it. Frankly, I didn't know Raul had it in him. Matter of fact, I didn't even know he knew that much English. <laughs> Tell me this style is terrific, it is kind of different.